Okay, so in Mounts chapter 9, we deal with adjectives. Let's make sure that we understand the difference between a noun and an adjective. Um, a noun, in terms of uh, what, how people describe a noun, is that it names a person, place, or thing, right? Uh, what, how would you describe an adjective? Uh-huh. Something that describes a noun or modifies a noun, qualifies a noun in some way. So <clears throat> that's what we call a notional way of defining it, uh, where you're thinking in terms of, of, of what it is. Um, now, there's another way to describe a noun versus an adjective in terms of the form, and that's what I want to focus on here, and that's this. Uh, when we deal with nouns, one of the things that makes a noun different from an adjective is that a noun has one gender, okay? So think about the word for kingdom. What's the word for kingdom? Basileia. What gender is it? Feminine. Will you ever see that as a masculine noun? You shouldn't, right? If you do, it's because some first-year grammar student didn't write it correctly or something like that. So it's, it's feminine. That's the, that's the grammatical gender that it's assigned as part of the Greek language. Logos is masculine, good, and ergon is neuter. Okay, so all these have just one gender. That's why when you meet them in your vocab list, you will be given an article, and the article will only be one gender, and the gender of that article will tell you the gender of the noun. Adjectives, on the other hand, in terms of their form, uh, will occur with all genders, okay? They are not committed to just one gender, because adjectives have to modify nouns, and nouns can be any gender, and they can be any number. So adjectives will have all those forms as well, all right? So that is a formal distinction between the two. And, and so, so to think of it this way, the adjective is a kind of chameleon, isn't it? It's always changing its color to reflect what it's modifying, but the, the, the gender of the noun will always be the same. Okay. Now, we want to talk about the different functions of noun, or excuse me, the different functions of, functions of adjectives. And we'll start with thinking about them in English, and then we'll look at how Greek uh, handles these things, okay? So an attributive adjective, uh, adjective is a modifier that tells you what kind of noun we're dealing with. If I want to talk about, um, let's just say, a boy, okay, I could just refer to a boy, but if I want to describe that boy and tell you what kind of boy went to the store or caught a baseball, it might be something like a, um, a fine boy. Okay, so here the word fine is an adjective. And what is its function? It is attributive. Okay, so attributive adjectives tell you what kind of noun you're dealing with. Um, I could say something like a tall man there tall is an adjective tells you what kind of man the big car what kind of car the big one okay so these are all examples of attributive adjectives the second kind of adjective that we have in language is what's called a predicate adjective or if you want to use the word a predicative uh, you can a predicate adjective is going to uh, be, it's going to function differently here, all right? A predicate adjective will be an adjective like these, but it's going to occur in a copular sentence and tell you what the subject noun is. So there's always going to be some kind of a predication, an assertion that some subject noun is a certain quality, a certain kind of thing. So uh, to take uh, our examples here, I could say something like the car is big. Okay. Now big is an adjective just like it is here, but it's no longer telling me what kind of car I'm making an assertion about. I'm actually saying that this car, whatever the car is, is a quality. All right. The car is big. Um, the man was tall. So I don't have to use present tense for my copula, my verb of being. 
Uh, I could use any tense, but what I am saying is that that subject is some adjectival quality. So, so that's the difference. A lot of times I have students that can't really grab onto the difference between an attributive adjective and a predicate adjective. Let me give you uh, one more sentence here. Take a look at this sentence. The big man is happy. How many adjectives do I have here? I have two. Okay, which ones are they? All right, so I've got big and happy. What kind of adjective is big? It is attributive because it's telling me what kind of man is the center of discussion here. It's not just any man, it's the big man, right? What kind of adjective is happy? It is a predicate adjective because happy is the quality that I'm asserting about the big man. That's what I'm saying the big man is, okay? So that's the difference between these two types. Now, the third type of adjective, or the third function of adjectives, is called the substantival function, okay? So we have attributive, predicate, and substantival. A substantival adjective is one, basically, it's equal to an attributive adjective, but with no noun to modify, okay? And when that's the case, it will function like the noun. So let's, uh, let's think of an example here. Okay, so I have the sentence, the holy are blessed. The holy are blessed. Uh, which one of these is the adjective? Holy, all right? Now, um, is there a noun that the word holy accompanies and modifies? No, it's, there's not, right? So what function does this adjective have? Well, it's substantival. It's filling a noun role. What usually fills the subject slot in a sentence? A noun does, right? Usually I have a noun that's functioning as the subject, but here the adjective holy is functioning as the subject, and that makes it a substantival adjective. The holy are blessed. Now, here it's the subject. I could have a different uh, substantival adjective functioning in a different way. For example, God hates the proud. Okay, uh, where's, my, where's my adjective? It's here, it's with the proud. And what noun role does this adjective have? It's the direct object. Are nouns usually going to function as direct objects? Yes, but adjectives can do that as well. Okay, and so that's a substantival adjective. Uh, if I had an actual noun, it would be something like the proud, I don't know, sinners, okay? Or the proud men. But when I drop the noun but leave the attributive adjective, then now it's a substantival adjective. You see? All right. Yes, was there a question in the back? No, because um, attributive adjectives always occur with a noun and tell you what kind of noun it is. Okay? So I could say something like, the holy are blessed men. And then blessed would be attributive. But if I just say the holy are blessed, there blessed is functioning as a predicate kind of adjective. And it's actually a participle, which we'll get to uh, several chapters hence. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Everybody understand the distinctions here. All right. Then let's look at how Greek... Um, forms the adjective first, and then we'll look at um, how, uh, how we'll see them in actual constructions, okay? So, on Mounts page 65, we, uh, we come to Mounts' chart here on, on the adjectives, and uh, he gives us the, the adjective agathos. Now, if you've ever met somebody named Agatha, that doesn't seem like a very common name anymore. 
but Agatha is related to this word. What's, ag- what's agathos mean? It means good. That's right. So uh, here's the masculine form of the adjective agathos and the feminine form agathe, the neuter form agathon. Okay? Now, I'm not going to write this whole thing on here. Uh, do notice, by the way, that my, my accents are acute on this final syllable, right? Because these are words that occur all by themselves in isolation. If you had another word following in the Greek text, then that would shift to a grave accent. Now, <clears throat> let's just, just think about this for a moment. Remember how I told you that adjectives can change their gender. They always reflect the gender of the noun that they are describing. And so when you get a lexical form for an adjective like agathos, what Mounts is going to do is he's going to give you something like this, agathos, and then he's going to give you an eta, and then an omicron nu. What does that tell you? It's giving you three possibilities because there are three genders, okay? Remember, your lexical form of nouns is always the nominative singular and then whatever gender it is. Your lexical form of adjectives will always be nominative singular, but then whatever the masculine, feminine, and neuter forms are, those will be reflected. And if it's what we call a three-termination adjective, that is to say if there's a distinct ending for masculine, feminine, and neuter, then there'll be three endings possible in your lexical form. Uh, You'll see all three. There are some adjectives that are two-termination forms. On page 70, Mounts gives you for the, the, the third form in your vocab list, I, O, N, I, O, S. Okay, you see that? Uh, now, what's right next to the uh, I, O, N, I, O, S form? We have on. Now, so how many endings or terminations do we have for this adjective? That means eternal. Two. So this would be called a two-termination adjective, okay? So we have three-termination adjectives and two-termination adjectives. So a two-termination adjective only has two terminations or two endings, and the first ending you see represents the masculine and the feminine forms. The, uh, The second one you see will represent the neuter, okay? So in these situations where you have a two-termination adjective, Uh, you won't be able to tell the difference between a masculine and a feminine form of that adjective, but it'll be modifying a noun usually, and you'll know whether the noun is masculine or feminine if you know the lexical form, okay? So uh, just pay attention to what accompanies that that two-termination adjective. Now, as far as agathos is concerned, is that a two- or a three-termination adjective? It is a three-termination adjective. What is the stem of the adjective here before the case ending? This first one is Omicron, right? So this is what declension pattern? Second, good. Agathe, what is its stem vowel? It's eta, so it's first declension, agathon, second, because it's got a an Omicron stem vowel. So our adjectives, in, in terms of uh, agathos, as a three-termination adjective, will follow what's called the 212 pattern. All right? It'll follow a 212 pattern. Now, you already know all the case endings for second declension and first declension, don't you? So guess what? There is nothing new to memorize about adjectives here. Isn't that great? Congratulations. All right. So, you should be able to parse any 212 adjective that you come across. So uh, let's, um, let's just take a moment and review the, uh, the forms of the uh, adjective agathos. So let me have you go to page 65, and we'll read the masculine forms and go down the row here. Everybody, agathos, agathu, agatho, agathon. Are there any strange case endings here? No? Doing what Lagos does, doesn't it? Agathoi? Agathone? Agathois? 
Agathus. Any strange case endings here? No. All the same forms as Lagos, right? Okay, look at Agathe, everybody. Agathe? Agathes? Agathe? Agathane? Agathai? Agathon? Agathais? Agathas? Anything uh, out of the ordinary here? No. And in fact, Agathe, it has an eta stem, so its genitive does what eta stems do. It stays eta in the genitive, stays eta in the dative, stays eta in the accusative. You see? All right. And then look at Agathon, the neuter form. Agathon? Agathu? Agatho? Agathon? Agatha? Agathon? Agathois? Agatha? Anything unusual here? Well, this is glorious, isn't it? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now, when you have an adjective that you need to parse for your homework, I would recommend, just like I did with the article, that you give the lexical form with all the terminations so that you know whether it's a three-termination adjective or a two, right? Because they're not necessarily, you, can't, you just can't look at it and tell, okay? So, so go ahead and just make it a standard practice. If, if agathon is your form, then give me agathos, agathe, agathon for your lexical form, okay? Now, you don't have to write agathos, agathe, agathon, but agathos and then the eta and the on would be great, okay? So it's just good, good practice uh, for you. Okay, does anybody have any questions about how we form the, uh, the adjectives here? This is not the only pattern adjectives can follow, by the way, but this is a common pattern. We haven't learned third declension nouns. There are some third declension adjectives, so when we meet them, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about them. Let me go back, by the way, to Ion Ionios. Agathos, agathe, agathon is three terminations, so it's following, as we said, two, one, two. What pattern does Ionios follow? It follows two, two, okay? The first form has an Omicron stem vowel. Second form has an Omicron stem vowel, so they're both following the second declension. So it's a two, two pattern. All right? We all good? Okay. So with 9.8, we are going to now look at how Greek takes these forms of the adjective that we've just learned and actually uses them in constructions to create attributive adjective constructions, predicate adjective constructions, and then how they can occur as substantival uh, adjectives. Uh, okay, so uh, let's look at attributive adjectives here, okay? What is the case, pardon my pun, what's the case with attributive adjectives? They will accompany a noun and agree in which ways? Okay, case, gender, number. Okay, so I'll abbreviate that, C, G, and the number symbol. Okay, they've got to agree in all three ways if they are attributive adjectives. All right, so let's take a look at uh, how you might see this in, in an actual sentence. So here I have ha agathos lagos. Which one of these words is my adjective? Agathos is. Uh, what is it modifying? Lagos. So lagos is my noun. Agathos is my adjective. What uh, is the case gender number of lagos? So it's masculine and singular. What case is it? Nominative. Good. What about agathos? It's the same, isn't it? What about the article ha? It is the same. Now, you remember your article has to agree with its noun in case gender number two, right? So the adjectives are going to do the same thing. So all three of these characters are going to share the same case gender and number. Now, do I have to have an article? No. I don't have to talk about the good word. I could talk about a good word, couldn't I? And then if I drop the article, that would be okay. I could still have agathos lagos, okay? So that is uh, the good word. 
Now remember, we're talking about attributive adjectives here, so this is telling me what kind of word, right? What kind of word are we talking about? We're talking about the good word, that good kind of word. Uh, okay, good. Mm -hmm, go ahead. If it's, if it's definite, it'll have to have the article. Well, actually, there'll be some situations where a noun can be definite even without the article. Yes, yes. So even an attributive adjective can occur with a noun and there not be an article. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, we'll, we'll talk about this in, in just a moment, okay? Well, for, for now, what I just want you to see is that the case gender number of the attributive adjective is agreeing with the case gender number of the noun that it modifies. Okay, now, yes. The word order uh, is important, and this is one of the ways that the adjective can occur. It's not the only way. Okay, so again, we'll talk about that in just a moment. I don't want to worry about the word order right now. I just want you to see the principle that attributive adjectives accompany their noun and agree in case gender number. Okay. So, uh, here, ha agathos lagos is nominative case, so what might its function be if I had this in a sentence? Well, what kind of well not, I'm that's the adjective, but I'm talking about the whole expression. Ha agathos lagos, since it's all nominative, what, what would its function be in the sentence? You'd, you'd expect it to be the subject, right? But if I had something like, um, the apostles love the good word, what would have to change here? Yes, the case would have to change. Now, would I change the gender and the number? No, because good word, the good word, is still singular, and word is masculine because it has to be, right? But the case is going to have to change, and so what would I change it to? Yes, I'm going to change my case ending, so it's going to be ton agathon, Logon, and so now it's accusative, okay? So again, my, my principle and my point here is that the adjective's case gender number has to match the noun's case gender number. So here, here's a trick question. Why is the adjective's case accusative? Because the noun's accusative. Why is the noun's case accusative? Because it's the direct object of love. Okay? This is what I'm trying to help you see. The noun is really the king here. As the noun goes, so goes the article, so goes the adjective. The noun is the head, as it were, of this whole phrase. The good word. So, if I change the noun in any way, everything else has got to follow suit. So let's change logon to something else like, well, what kind of feminine nouns do we know? Well, we talked about basileia, didn't we? So let's make it basileion. I love, can I leave this as ton agathon basileion? No. What case gender number is basileion? It's a, yep, it's accusative, but it's feminine and singular. So what does the adjective have to become? It's got to become the same. It's got to become accusative, feminine, singular. What's that going to look like here? Okay, it's got to be aga, thane, right? And ton has to become tane. That's right. So now I have agreement in every way. I love Tain Agathain Basileon. I love the good kingdom. See that? Okay. So uh, this, is, uh, this is always, always, always the case with attributive adjectives. There'll be a noun, and I'll agree with the noun, case, gender, and number.